Howdy, folks, and welcome to Mainly Acres. Folks, it's Harrison with Mainly Acres Farms. I figured I would do a uh, tutorial video for you guys today on how to run your hand crank sewing machine. Uh, also go over a few of the uh, key features on here. Uh, show you guys how to thread it, how to replace your needle on the needle post. Um, also how to uh, load your bobbins and thread your bobbins using the machine. And also talk about a few of the different materials that you can sew using this machine and uh, also a few projects that I've completed um, using this as well. So let's dive right on in and see how to install the needle on here. Alrighty, putting, replacing the needle on these machines are, is real easy. Um, all you're going to need is you're going to need yourself a replacement needle. You're going to need the uh, locking lug that holds the needle in place and you'll also need a uh, flat headed screwdriver so that's all the things you're going to need to do this here and the first thing you are want to do is you're going to want to take a look at your needle and on one side of your needle is a flat side and the other side is rounded and it also has a uh, channel cut out on the rounded side so what you're going to want to do is orientate your needle to where the flat side of the needle is going to rest up against the post that drives your needle up and down. So let's raise that up here by spinning the wheel. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it flat side against the post and I'm going to kind of hold it there with my finger. Now I will show you guys a close-up. You guys will notice on your um, needle drive shaft there is a piece of metal that is welded on the inside and it's basically a stop so it won't allow your needle to go up any higher so what you're going to want to do is um, place the needle firmly against the post and push it all the way up until it can't go up any further then what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your lug and you're going to want to let me see if I can move my hand out of the way by holding the needle you're going to take your lug fit it up under the needle and bring it up and what I like to do is kind of hold the needle with the other hand and then hold the lug in tight against the post like so so that way it will hold the needle in place so that we can just finger tighten the screw on the back here uh, another thing I want to point out and I'll show you guys a close-up is on the back of this post there is a small hole drilled out on the back side and that hole is to meet up with the screw on your locking lug so when you're screwing it in just make sure that it sets in there and the way you can make sure that it's locked in there is just kind of let me hold the crank move it up and down like so and um, it won't move once it's in the hole there it'll stay nice and solid so you just finger tighten it like so you uh, can rotate your head at this point out of the way because what we're going to do is we're going to take our flat headed screwdriver and we're going to righty tighty and just snug it down just like finger tight don't there's no need to reef on it and you know put it down in there because you will uh, strip out the screw uh, but if you order these machines from uh, Bantam Saddle and Tag they do send you an extra lug and screw if you happen to do that but uh, just listen to that piece of device and tighten it uh, just lightly finger tight and um, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the crank and put it at the uh, 12 o'clock position and we're going to hold the crank with our right hand and with our left hand we're going to come and see if we can pull the needle off of the post here so what you do is you just put pressure on it and kind of come down on the needle and make sure that it's firmly into place now that we've figured out how to install the needle, I'd like to talk about um, loading up your bobbins on the machine. 
Now, you can choose to load your own bobbins by, you know, doing it the old-fashioned way and, and winding it by hand. A lot of people prefer that, but if you guys want to save some time and it's, you know, really slick how it works, your machine can wind your bobbins for you. So what you're going to want to do is first you're going to want to have your thread. Now you can either use this post here on the machine to put your spool of thread on, but I really suggest um, to you guys is to either make or buy yourself a um, thread stand that has a nice long arm on it. Alrighty, so let's talk about how we're going to thread the machine to load our bobbins using the uh, bobbin wheel here. And what I like to do, and I've seen a few other people do this as well, we're going to feed our string through the top hole in this arm right across here. We're going to go right on the inside of this first um, thread guide. And that is it. That's all we're going to do um, to be able to load up our bobbins. Now what you do is you take this little guy, you slide him on the end of your bobbin wheel. So then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull this extra string off your bobbin or it'll wind it around there. You're going to take your string, you're going to um, get it started on your bobbin, and then you just give this guy a crank and it loads it right up. Alrighty, so now that we have our bobbin um, loaded with the speedy loader here, let's talk about how to install it. So let's put our crank at the noon position here. I'm going to lift up the presser foot, slide this lift up on your plate back here, slide it over. And if you guys can see here, I have a uh, bobbin all loaded in the machine. And what I like to do is I like to use this hook um, and just grab on the side of the bobbin case here and lift right up and it takes the and lifts the bobbin right out. Alrighty, now that we have our bobbin out of the machine, let's talk about how we're going to thread our uh, bobbin into the bobbin carrying case. But before we dive into that, you guys may notice that there are two holes on the top of your uh, bobbin carrying case. What these two holes mean to me and what I've found uh, in my experience with running the machine is that the hole furthest away from the end of the hook is typically used for your thicker gauged thread and the reason that is is because if you turn it on its side here and you look at this tensioning spring inside um, the second hole oh, furthest away from the hook is um, at the very end of the spring so the spring attaches here with a screw and the end of the spring comes to the uh, second hole here so it, it doesn't put a whole lot of tension on that thread and where it's a thicker thread your best bet is to just go ahead and thread it through this hole here. Now if you're using finer thread like I'm using today I find that using the first hole here closest to the hook is the way to go because it will bring your thread into the um, inside of the spring where it has the most tension and it will allow it to have better control when you're sewing on your project so that's that's how that's what I have found that helps me decide um, and how I'm going to thread my uh, bobbin carrying case and as you guys can see on the inside of the bobbin there's two holes as well and those match up with the uh, two holes on the upper side. So we're going to thread our string right through the first hole here. And I'm going to have to do this where I can see what I'm doing. We're going to pull a nice bit out through the hole. And at this point is where I like to, while I'm pulling the slack through, is to go ahead and uh, put the bobbin inside of the case. Now when you're installing the bobbin into the case I find it's helpful to um, have your lead string here coming like so and kind of place the bobbin in at an angle 
and then drop it in like that. Mm. A little test to see if you put your bobbin in correctly is to pull on the excess string here and watch what direction the bobbin spins. It's real important that when you load it in, when you pull on this string here, that your bobbin spins counterclockwise. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the bobbin on its side. We're going to take the end of our thread here and we're going to go ahead and thread it through the hole closest to the end of the hook. So that way we're in the corresponding holes from the inside to the outside. And now what I like to do is now that I've got it threaded through both of my holes, I'll take a uh, sewing needle or just a hook or anything and use that to pull the thread over and under the tensioning um, spring here and give a little tug on the extra here to make sure that the thread gets seated all the way underneath this spring here. And then I like to also uh, give a little pull to make sure everything's still running fine. And it is. So we're good to go. Now that we're ready to install it, the first thing we're going to want to do is lift up here on our top plate and push it out of the way. Now that we have that out of the way, we are going to install our uh, pre-threaded bobbin carrying case and the tip here. And how I like to uh, install it is with the crank at the 12 o'clock position. Now that's really important because it's going to set up your gears correctly to run your bobbin properly. If you install your bobbin without having your crank at the 12 o'clock position, you won't always guarantee that you have it in the correct way and you'll have problems when it comes to sewing. So when you have your crank at the 12 o'clock position, the gear that operates the carrying case will be at the 3 o'clock. So we take our bobbin and we hold it like so, so that way the hook is towards my thumb come from the front of the machine and just slide it over the hole and you might have to do a little bit of wiggling but it will slide right on in so now that we have that in we're going to take one hand here and hold the uh, excess coming out and since I have my other hand holding a light <laughs> I'm going to swing this over and get it started and go ahead and secure it back down and now you guys can see you have your extra thread coming out this side here and you have your plate all installed and it's uh, you can give a little tug and you still see the threads coming out nice so you did a good job alright let's jump right on into threading the sewing machine if you guys have threaded your machine to load your bobbins that's fine go ahead and leave it at that step um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the thread out and start from the beginning so that got, that way you guys can get a, uh, a full um, thread in right from the scratch. So if you guys choose to use this back post for your spool, that's fine. Uh, I would suggest that you guys use a um, thread stand. It just helps out and makes life so much easier when using this machine. So let's get right on in to threading the sewing machine. So we have the end of our thread here. The first hole that we're going to want to go into is right here. And you're going to want to go in from the top and come down through the bottom. And like before, when we were threading it for the to load the bobbin, you come around this first thread guide. You bring your thread in between the two presser plates for your tensioning disc. Come back up top and go around the next thread guide here. And at this point, what I like to do is I like to uh, hold tight, have a firm grip on the uh, thread coming into the machine and give a nice tug here on this one and what that does is it sets the thread in your first tensioning disc here. Now the next process that I'm going to show you um, 
is, is optional. If you guys are using a fine gauge thread like we're using here, you're going to want to head and go through the second tensioning discs as well and use those thread guides too. But if you're using a heavier duty or larger gauge thread, then you're going to go ahead and skip this next process. Now that we've done that, we're going to find the end of our thread here and we're going to go up through the next thread guide attached to the uh, front of the sewing head here and we're going to take that thread and we're going to go straight up to the sky now that we have our thread through this uh, thread bracket here on the head we're going to want to find the end of our thread again and we're going to want to come in between this first rocker arm here and the um, thread guide here and you're going to want to come right in between those two and keep coming to the sky and then what I like to do is kind of rest the thread over this arm here find the tip of my uh, thread go through the thread guide on the top of this arm here and take my thread and just let it drape across the back side here now we're going to take the uh, rod with the little hook on the end that they send with the machines and we are going to run it up the uh, channel of the needle driver here so we're going to run that up and it comes right out the top of the needle driver we're going to take our thread thread it through the hook and we'll pull up on the thread and pull down on the threading hook all the way down and pull our extra thread on through <clears throat> now with the crank still at 12 o'clock we're going to uh, drop the presser foot down I'm going to trim a little bit of this extra off and give us a nice clean cut on the end. Now we're going to thread the sewing machine and we're going to start from the head of the machine and thread to the back of the machine. So we'll take our thread and find the hole there and get it on through. Alrighty, now that we have our thread all the way through, we're going to go ahead and lift up on the presser foot and we're going to pull our excess through the hole in the presser foot and let the presser foot down and it is all threaded and ready to go so now what we're going to do is we're going to run on full cycle going clockwise we're going to uh, run the crank and what that's going to do is it's going to bring up the thread from the bobbin we pull the string through and now you guys are ready to sew <laughs> alrighty folks hopefully this video helped you guys out I know it was a long one um, if you guys hanged in there through the whole thing hopefully you guys learned a lot of valuable information I did try to cut it and edit it and short it down a bit but uh, I felt like this is as much as far as I could edit it down to um, so real quickly I just want to show you a few of the uh, things that I made just recently here with the sewing machine these are two wallets one for my uh, mother and this one's for my mother-in-law um, and I was real impressed that this sewing machine was able to handle these projects and the reason being is because here is a raw sample of the leather you guys hear that it's like in between rawhide and like a skirting material that you would use for um, like saddles and whatnot so it's real it's not really pliable as you guys can see it's kind of stiff uh, very thick full thickness I tanned this myself and I was just blown away that this little machine right here 
uh, could sew it. Now I did have to do a whole bunch of modifications. So if you guys are interested in sewing uh, thicker leather or uh, saddle type leather, uh, leave me comments in uh, the uh, box below and I will let you guys know uh, how I set up my machine to be able to sew that. You're really going to have to tighten down on your uh, tensioning discs, uh, both the upper ones and the one in your uh, bobbin. So. Let me get out of here. I know this is probably going to be like 20 minutes long, so take care, guys. Thank you for tuning in, and if you watch the full thing, hey, thank you guys so much, and um, talk to you soon.